We're in the alcove. We are. Where can you find classic Shakespeare, a modern day impressionist painter, books turned into art, and an event called Balloonacy in one place? The answer is right, right here. here on New Day with our good friend and Art Zone host, Nancy Guppy. <laughs> Hello, got it all. Hello, how are you? I'm very well. I'm wearing my uh, spring, uh, first day of spring coat. You look like you're ready I'm for anything. I'm very bright, bright and cheery. All right, well, so we'll begin with the um, Bainbridge Island Museum of Art, which is mm -hmm. the um, artist book. So it's called Open Sesame, The Magic of Artists' Books Revealed. Look at that. When, yeah, it's a beautiful space. So when I um, when I first heard the phrase artist's books, I thought it was a hardcover, you know, a, a book about an artist and their work. No, 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 no. So artist's books are handcrafted, three-dimensional, like kind of basically sculptures, works of art. They deliver a message, a story, often with some sort of uh, interaction from the audience, like turning a page, pulling a, a lever, putting a, a puzzle together. So Open Sesame, this show at Bainbridge Museum, features 150 pieces from their permanent collection of 2,000. It's amazing. And they really, they're beautiful. They cover the gamut um, of uh, kind of e the emotional landscape. So there's a, a summer hat. I don't have an image of this, but there's a summer hat woven out of paper. On, on every piece of paper is a, a, a derogatory word uh, that has been um, said about women um, and their sexuality. The idea of the hat is that it kind of protects women from that kind of language. Interesting. Then another extreme would be this little uh, matchbook, and I think the name is called Our Old Flames Volume 1. <laughs> and the artist, it's about their difficulty with relationships. So on every match is a little uh, word or a little sentence kind of continues the story of what they've kind of gone through relationally. Mm -hmm. So it's very funny. Um, anyway, so it's a beautiful exhibit. Um, it runs through June 9th um, over on Bainbridge. And you can just walk on from Seattle because the, the museum is right there once right. you get off. And then you can get off, right. walk to the museum, and you're good. Exactly. So you don't have to drive on. I so, like that. Yeah, so that's, it's a great show. Uh, let's talk about Romeo and Juliet. This recently opened at ACT. Now, normally I would not push uh, Romeo and Juliet because it's been done so many times. Shakespeare wrote it in 1595, so we can do the math from that. Um, but well, somebody can. Somebody can, yeah. Maybe not, maybe not, not you and me. Maybe not you and me, yeah. But somebody can. <laughs> Uh, so the director, uh, John Langs, he's also the artistic director, um, he's doing some very unique things with this particular production. And, and one thing in particular is um, the two main characters, or two of the main characters, Romeo and the Friar, are deaf actors. And they are really, really good. Yeah, and the set's kind of gnarly, kind of a chain link fan, right. so it's really cool. So what really caught my attention, though, is that John is kind of making a philosophical connection between 1595 and 2019, in particular. The Parkland shootings last year, um, the horrible thing that happened there that really galvanized people, in particular students, to kind of rise up and say, have a strong opinion and um, take action about gun violence. Right. So the relationship he sees between Parkland and Romeo and Juliet is that sometimes something really, really horrible has to happen for things to change. And in this case, the, the Capulets and the Montagues, the two families, Romeo and Juliet's families, huge, you know, they, they hate each other, long rivalry, and it takes, and this is a spoiler alert if you don't know, it takes the death of their children, Romeo and Juliet, the most precious things to them for them to realize the cost of hate. So I think that's a really interesting yeah. And that Parallel. It was just too high. Yeah, that's just too uh, high. Exactly. That's a brilliant approach to this because it takes a classic story, but it gives us a, a contemporary way to exactly. understand yes, it. Yes, exactly. It lands us in the here and now. And I think that's one of the things about art, of course, that yeah. it can kind of change us in the here and now. So Romeo and Juliet, uh, it's it's a great show, and it runs through the 31st of March. Good, good, thanks. Um, Valerie Collymore is a local artist, and she grew up in Provence and on the French mm. Riviera where she learned about and fell in love with French Impressionism, which is Monet, Renoir, Cezanne, those kind of artists. So Valerie's life uh, has taken a real interesting kind of turn. She got her MD in pa pediatrics from Columbia uh, University. She got married, she had a family, always was interested in painting, but it wasn't until the last 10 years that she decided to s had stop her practice and focus completely on painting and teaching. She's like so, a renaissance person. She is, she really is. She, is, she has so many skills right. and she's a very very good impressionist uh, painter. Is beautiful it, it is beautiful, and she teaches at a variety of places around town. And so her upcoming solo show—it's called *A Passion for the French Tradition*, and it opens Thursday, the fourth of April, at Fountainhead Gallery, which is up on Queen mm -hmm. Anne Hill. So I definitely uh, suggest checking that. I, I think the opening this. is the fourth. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? I feel like you can almost smell the lavender, uh, right? yeah, and you can feel the kind of the warmth, yeah, right, absolutely. of the environment. So yeah, so it's um, it's a it's a really she's a really talented artist and Obviously. worth checking out. And then children's oh, theater. Oh, Oh man, last Friday I went to the opening of Balloonacy at, at the Children's Theater. It was absolutely spectacular. So the basic uh, story is it's an old man 
Um, it's established fairly quickly that he is, uh, has a birthday. He's lonely, and his attempts to celebrate his birthday by himself fail until a balloon, a red balloon, enters, enters the situation. So the actor um, who plays the old man is Todd Jefferson Moore. He's really one of my favorite actors. There is no dialogue in this uh, play. Really? There's a live piano player uh, scoring so the whole thing. it's almost like an old silent movie sort of it, thing with the live exactly. music. Exactly. And in fact, the, the physicality, his physicality is like a Charlie Chaplin or a wow. Buster Keaton. Yeah. It is so, so, so good. And the story, it's really about friendship. And that's really what, it's a beautiful kind of emotional arc. It's for th kids three and up. The kids went crazy, as mm -hmm. did the adults. It captures everybody. That's it's so good. it's so good, and it you runs. Can all enjoy. It's five oh fifty minutes. Anyone can handle that, right? Yes, that's and, actually and, and, my speed. Yeah, so let's right. go really quickly. I, I want you to get so to the far so far. Okay. Here if you so can. there's a new way to experience music that a millennial friend of mine, Abby Lindsay, told me about. So it's called So Far Sounds, and it's an international online concert hub. Started in London, and then they. Um, are now booking concerts in 428 Ooh. cities around the world. And here's how it works. You go onto their website, you uh, find the city, and you can find the neighborhood you want. So let's just say Seattle, and you want to find a show in, in Fremont. You find one there. It says a date. You click on it. That puts you into a lottery, a lottery for the ticket. A couple days later, you'll find out if you were chosen to, to get to buy tickets. At that point, you buy the tickets. A few days before the show, it'll send you a, uh, information, where is the show? And then you show up. Here's the, here's the hook. You do not know who you're going to see. Really? No, it's a completely an unknown. So you might not love the artist right but, but you might but you might brand new that it, you do love. exactly and and so it's kind of like it kind of breaks you out of your comfort yeah. zone and and you meet new people so I think it's a really uh, worth the risk I think it's a pretty cool thing and in, in the um, website of course is on new day so perfect yeah, yeah. thank you so much Nancy. oh thank you catch art zone with Nancy Guppy Friday nights at 8 on the Seattle Channel we've linked more info online about the performances and exhibits Nancy spotlighted as well as how to stream past art zone episodes yes. Still ahead on New Day, a cosmetic surgeon shares his approach to helping patients heal very quickly. We'll be right back.